In this episode, we will talk about pure quantum effects of electromagnetism, the Aranov bond effect. Let's enjoy it! Unification is an important issue in physics. Basically, the whole modern physics is always looking for unification. In the past, electricity and magnetism were considered as two separated forces. Thanks to the works of Maxwell and others, it was later understood that both forces were just manifestation of a single interaction, which we call today electromagnetic interaction. Inside electromagnetism or electrodynamics, moving charges are able to generate magnetic fields. In this way, it is also true that an electric current can generate magnetic fields which basically move forming circles around the electric current. The mathematical formulation of this phenomenon is represented through the Ampere law or the biot savart law. Additionally, a charge moving along a region where there is a magnetic field will also experience some force perpendicular to its direction of motion and perpendicular to the lines of the magnetic field. This phenomena is represented mathematically through the Lorentz force law. Know that if the charges in the middle of the magnetic field region don't move, then they will not experience any magnetic force. Indeed, magnetic forces are felt only when the charges are moving. When there is a group of charges moving, we then have a current. In this way, the currents also experience a magnetic force if there is a magnetic field crossing the cables transporting the current. The electric motors, for example, and other engines, use the Lorentz force for transforming electric energy in kinetic energy which will be used for practical purposes. It is also well known that there are positive and negative electric charges and that they attract each other when they have opposite sign and they repel each other when they have the same sign or character. The law representing this phenomenon is the Coulomb law. Another interesting phenomenon from classical electrodynamics is the fact that a change in time of a magnetic flow generates an electric current or motion of charges. This phenomenon is known as the law of Faraday. The law of Faraday is fundamental for the operation of generators of alternate current. Basically, the electricity arriving to our homes is a natural consequence of the fact that the generators transform the kinetic energy in electric energy. Finally, for completing the scenario about classical electrodynamics, we have to mention that accelerated charges generate electromagnetic waves which move over the vacuum at the speed of light. Subsequently, Einstein's theory of relativity confirmed that Maxwell's theory was correct. Einstein basically realized that the symmetries of Maxwell theory have to be translated to the laws of ordinary dynamics. Besides this, Einstein realized that one of the consequences of relativity is that a magnetic field in one frame of reference can perceive as an electric field in another frame of reference and vice versa. This is the case because both fields are just components of the same tensor field from the perspective of a special relativity. If we go now from classical electrodynamics to quantum electrodynamics, at the quantum level, it has been demonstrated that the fundamental objects describing the dynamic of the particles inside the electromagnetic interaction are the potential fields, namely the vector potential which is related to the magnetic field and the scalar potential which is connected to the electric field. Both fields are just components of the same quadrivector from the perspective of electrodynamics and from the perspective of special relativity. Among all the effects perceived at the quantum level, the aharonov bond effect is one of the most important ones ever discovered. It is an effect that demonstrates that the potentials in electrodynamics have a testable physical effect at the quantum regimes. 
For understanding this aspect better, imagine for a moment a standard double stick experiment with electrons. If we send the electrons one by one, then the pattern of impacts over the screen behind the slits will generate the standard interference pattern observed in waves. This means that each electron crosses both slits simultaneously in principle. Now imagine that we put a solenoid between both slits as it appears on the figure. If a current crosses it, then a magnetic field will move through the center of the solenoid. However, all the regions surrounding the solenoid will be free of any magnetic field. Yet still, the magnetic potential generating the magnetic field doesn't vanish over the same regions surrounding the solenoid. Then it comes out that there is an additional shift between the paths taken by the electrons when they cross the double slit. This extra shift is a physical effect generated by the vector potential surrounding the solenoid. In this way, the vector potential has some observable physical effect. In summary, while at the classical level the potentials are just considered to be mathematical artifacts without any physical observable effect, at the quantum level they are physical fields which generate testable and physical effects. If you liked this video, please give us a like, share the link, and subscribe to the channel. More videos in Spanish and in English are coming very soon. Continue with us.